is some pretty dope people in the barber industry, people that you wouldn't necessarily know about. So what I wanted to do was shed some light on certain barbers in the industry that you don't know but should, just to give them the opportunity to share that story. My name is Ray Lucas, by the way, but this not about me. I'm just using my platform to let other barbers share that story. What's up, everybody? Uh, my name is Clarence House. I am also known as Krill. Uh, I am from Colorado Springs, Colorado. I uh, was born in the Philippines, military family. I actually got down to settle down in Colorado where I represent 719, the fullest. I've been a barber going on 18 years now. Um, I first started picking up the Clippers when I was a freshman in high school. Um, I'm about to be 32 in the next couple of weeks. So I started at 14. So yeah, it's about around 18 years that I've been in the game. Where it all started, um, just riding the bus. My actual barber, um, shout out to Craig. He was a uh, he was my bus driver, and he gave me the knowledge in the game to just get some clippers and make some extra money on the side. So he gave me my first pair of clippers, and then um, I just started cutting up hair in the locker room, fifty cent. Using that 50 cent, just, you know, get snacks from the vending machine, you know, pop tarts, some Texas cinnamon rolls, them things. It was a hot commodity back then. So <laughs> I needed that sugar rush being a freshman. <laughs> and, you know, and I, I had a whole, I had a lot of boys on the team, basketball team, football team that trusted me. And then I had a little brother I can mess up on his head all the time. But uh, at the end of the, you know, after so much practice, I got decent, you know, stuck cut, cutting all through high school, cutting everybody. And then, it carried on where I brought my clippers to college, and then I just elevated after that. What I always find intriguing is the reasons barbers leave their hometowns to go and cut in another state. And what I learned is while our stories have unique circumstances, that they're really not that different. Uh, me and my wife, uh, we slid down to Texas probably around 2017. Um, just to find, it's a different journey for us. Um, you know, being in Colorado, ain't too many of us out there. Um, when I say us, I mean black people, <laughs> cultured people. So we came, we came, we came and visit Dallas uh, beforehand, and we liked it a lot. So we wanted to make that transition to where we wanted to make Dallas our home. At first, it was a little rocky, just because we didn't get used to it. Um, the traffic was bad. The drivers were crazy. <laughs> but um, as we built relationships and just progressed just through life. And Dallas, we had our daughter out here. We just decided to just make this our home. We love it. I think even if you stumble upon being a barber or you approach it casually, eventually it'll draw you closer to being more than that. The culture, conversations, the freedom of being in control of how you want to live is exhilarating. Well, so... I came, I feel like I came in the barber game a little bit, not barber game, but I guess to the overall industry kind of late because I was just, I was just doing house calls, just cutting on the side. Didn't really think about making it a career. I just, just wanted to keep it as a side hustle. Um, but it's ever since I got into a shop, which was like 2018, um, I fully embraced the overall um, perseverance you had to be to actually be in this game, in this industry. So I first started working at an all-Mexican barbershop. I was the only black dude in there. And having to grind and to stay in long hours, early shift, throughout the whole process, it just helped me elevate as, not, not only as a barber, but as an entrepreneur, as a, as a man, as a husband, as a father. It just helped me out overall. Um, but this barber industry is no joke. You really got to put in the love and passion for it and the overall time to actually get something out of it. The goals every barber has is usually the driving force that determines how hard they go. And you can almost always tell who's serious and dedicated to the craft by the goals they set for themselves. Ooh, that's a lot of... I guess I'm not even a hope. It's definitely going to be a goal. Is to achieve overall notoriety through a lot of barbers. Just to know that you know Crib is in this game. 
stamp my name on it, build my brand. Um, I followed, I, not only do I follow Ray and looked up to him, but I follow a lot of other barbers like Hawk, where he was on, he was a face of Babylist. So, you know, being one of the only black barbers to be on the brand like that is big. So the goal is to be the next one put my face and be a brand of a barber and being on a clipper box just in general. So I could be not only noticed in the US, but there's barbers all over the world. <laughs> so I could be noticed worldwide, you know, especially back home in the Philippines. You know, you have my face on a box like that and something I could represent both cultures. It's gonna be something big and something I need to strive for. And ultimately, and I even hope I'm gonna get. <laughs>